Okay, hi. Uh, I have a really cool, kind of relevant court case for y'all. And this is going to be um, Hurley, the Irish American Gay, Lesbian, and Bisexual Group of Boston Incorporated. Um, so, kind of a long, long name. I'm just going to call them the, uh, the, the Irish American Gay. And no, wait, that's uh, uh, the. Uh, just call me I. No. What's the best name for these? Uh, okay. Uh, the, the group of. I'm going to call them the group of Boston. That, that sounds like, okay, good, good compromise. Um, so, 1995. Now, the reason why this is relevant was because there was a really huge Supreme Court case that was argued just a few days ago, like a week ago, um, over uh, free speech, whether or not state, states could pass laws regarding um, mandating certain restrictions on who social media could ban. And this court case was apparently really relevant i don't really get it myself but they're very relevant so there you go anyways um so um 1995 uh and in 1993 um the uh the south boston alliance uh, allied war veteran council was given the uh authorization by the government of boston um, to organize a St. Patrick's Day parade. And the parade was quite popular. Um, and, you know, obviously they're taking in applications. Oh, okay, this restaurant, they want permission. You know, this, uh, this karate group, they want permission. Cool, that's sick. Uh, and then came in the, uh, the group of Boston, right? Um, and they asked to be a part of a parade. And the Allied War Veteran Council was not... Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying, right? So they said no. Um, which is, um, you know, pretty rude. Um, I, I, I don't know the exact cr criteria to be accepted, but my guess is they probably were realistically un unfairly rejected. Um, and I can't imagine they were, like, this isn't like a, yeah, they were grooming Mike. I think they were probably, I mean, they were probably more than not just going to be some wholesome, wholesome gay, you know, parade float. Probably wouldn't have been anything weird. So I'm, I don't know, maybe that's what their concern was, but I think it was probably unjustified. Uh, more likely than not. Um, so they got a court order to be in the parade and everything was good. And then next year they applied again and they were rejected again. And they were pretty mad. So you know what? They they, they, they weren't happy with a court order. They were going straight to, to, to sue them um, to get some, get some damages. Uh, um, and they actually won um, in the district court and the appellate court. Um, and then they, you know, they, they went to the, you know, the the Allied War Veteran Group, they had some, they had some money from a bunch of, uh, you know, conservative, uh, you know, uh, lobby groups, and, and they were able, you know, they, they appealed it, um, that, you know, yeah, yeah, so the, uh, the question was, um, does the Massachusetts law, oh, I should probably talk about the reasoning for it, they were, they were suing under the Equal Protection Clause, as well as the local law, which, uh, which would just which forbid discrimination based on sexual orientation. Um, yes, there you go. The question was, does the Massachusetts does the Massachusetts uh, m mandate requiring to include the uh, members violate the council's free speech right? Um, and does uh, excluding them violate their free uh, their equal protections of the law? Um, so it's argued April twenty fifth, nineteen ninety five. Um, there you go. Um, so yeah, in a nine to zero unanimous opinion, they said yes that essentially you could not require private citizens, um, just because it's a, because it's a government organized parade or government authorized parade, it's therefore subject to the uh, the laws, um, and that the First Amendment free speech given to uh, you know that that would typically you know, have a citizen of the United States is considered void because they are um, under state uh, authorization. So they, in this part of their, you know, conduct, they don't have free speech, essentially, in that, um, in, in regards to this, at least, when it comes to violating someone's rights. Um, so, yeah, there were many statutes that kind of held that, you know, this is 1995, so it's still a little bit more served than it would be now, but, yeah. Now, the really interesting thing I find about this is that um, it's a it's a nine to zero opinion with Thomas, Thomas, 
um, in the majority, which is just kind of wild to me. Um, you know, right? And, and Scalia as well. I mean, and O'Connor, as you know, all, all of the conservatives really. So really, Thomas is the is the really kind of crazy one because he's like, I mean, he is really, really conservative. He's not like, like he's not really Republican. He's just conservative. Um, so I'm surprised he went this way. But that's 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 all there is. Um, yeah. So if you are authorized by the government, then you are therefore subject to the same requirements. Um, there you go. Um, okay, that's all I have for y'all.